Hello, welcome back for lesson 9.5. We're putting together a full hypothesis now. <clears throat> and there's going to be six steps that we're going to follow. And I'm going to walk you through those six steps. We're going to state the hypothesis. We're going to give the level of significance of which we're going to reject or do not reject. We're going to find the p-value or the probability of an extreme outcome. We're going to draw that p-value on the graph. We're going to then make a decision to reject or do not reject. And then we're going to write our conclusion based upon H1. So I'm going to go ahead and share my paper here so you can work on that with me. <clears throat> and we are going to kind of just get warmed up here to all of this. So our first example, um, they gave us the hypothesis, our step one. Um, it says, assume the p-value is 0 0.0935. What type of test is this? So it's a less than, so we're going to consider this a left-tailed. And then it says, draw the picture of the p-value. <coughs> so the mean is at 10. And the p-value is a left than, a less, a less than a left-tailed. So we're going to draw our p-value on the left-hand side, and our p-value is 0 0.0935. We don't know what the sample mean was, but it reflects a p-value of 0 0.0935. Okay, the next example says we have um, our H0 is equal to 1, and our H a is greater than one. Assume the p-value is 0.1243. What type of test is this? So this is a right tail because it's a greater than. And so the mean we're gonna draw is the one and the p-value is gonna be on the right because it's a right tail. And the p-value would be 0.1243. Is we have <clears throat> H0 is 0.5 and HA is a proportion that's not equal to 0.5. Assume the p value is 0.2564. What type of test is this? This is a two tailed because it's not equal to. And so the mean is going to be at 0.5. And then we're going to have half of the p value to the left and half of the p value to the right. And so we're going to take 0.2564 and divide that by 2 to get 0.1282. And so 0.1282 on the left and 0.1282 on the right. And so we have to remember that when we have a two-tailed. OK, so we're going to put it all together with our six steps. Let's look at an example where we, we have it all worked out. It says, Jeffrey, as an eight-year-old, established a mean time of 16.43 seconds for swimming the 25-year-old freestyle with a standard deviation of 0.8 seconds. His dad, Frank, thought that Jeffrey could swim the 25-yard freestyle faster using goggles. Frank bought Jeffrey a new pair of expensive goggles and timed Jeffrey for 15 25-yard freestyle swims. So 15 times he swam that. For the 15 swims, Jeffrey's mean time was 16 seconds. Frank thought that the goggles helped Jeffrey to swim faster than the 16.43 seconds. Conduct a hypothesis test using a preset alpha at 0.05. Assume that the swim times for the 25 yard freestyle are normal. Set up the hypothesis test. Um, okay, so the hypothesis statement is H0 is, the mean is 16.43, which is what he had already established. And they are arguing, um, Frank, Frank, the dad, is arguing that he's actually going to swim it quicker than 16.43. So it's going to be less than. Okay, so it's a left tail. Um, the level of, level of significance, they said, was at alpha 0.05. And calculate the p-value. So determine the distribution needed. The random variable x bar is the sample mean time to swim the 25-yard freestyle. And the distribution is normal with the mean. And then the standard error is found by taking the standard deviation, which we happen to know is 0.8 divided by the square root of n. So for Jeffrey, it's his 
original mean 16.43. Um, his standard error is the standard deviation of 0.8 divided by the square root of n, which is square root of 15. And we're going to put that into Desmos. And we're going to find out what is the probability then that the average is actually, this should be the average, the sample mean is less than 16. And it comes out to be 0.0187. So I'm going to show you how they came up with that in Desmos. OK, so in Desmos, we're going to put in 16. 16.43 and the oops point eight divided by the square root of n divided by the square root of fifteen for the 15 swims and then it's a less than so this is going to be a negative infinity up to the left and then the maximum would be the 16. And you can see that it comes out to be 0.01868 and I bet you I'll do that one over here. Okay and I'm going to just um, zoom fit this with my uh, magnifying glass to get the correct picture. So there's my graph. So the p-value is 0 0.0187 when rounded appropriately. And that's what we have here, 0 0.0187. So <clears throat> um, so since the 0 0.0187 is our p-value, we're going to draw that on the graph. Because here is a 16.43. And we wanted to find out what is the probability of being less than the 16 that his average of the 15 swims were, and it was 0 0.0187. And so we're going to use that p value to make our decision in step five. So we're going to compare alpha and the p value. So the p-value, I always write it like this, the p-value on the left, which is 0 0.0187, and I'm gonna compare that to alpha, which is 0 0.05, and it's less than, so we do reject H0, so it says reject H0. That means that we're rejecting that the mean is 16.43. So our conclusion says at the 5% significance level, we conclude that Jeffrey swims faster using the new goggles. The sample data show there is sufficient evidence that Jeffrey's mean time to swim the 25 yard freestyle is less than 16.43 seconds. So there's our six steps. So let's look at our first one together here. So it says the mean throwing distance of a football for Marco, a high school freshman quarterback is 40 yards with a standard deviation of two. So let's just write this down. His mean is 40 and his standard deviation is two. The team coach tells Marco to adjust his grip to get more distance. So a different grip might help him throw further. More distance would be further. The coach records the distances for 20 throws. Okay, so it looks like N is 20. This is what we would do is write these things down. For the 20 throws, Marco's mean distance was 45 yards. So his sample mean X bar is 45. Okay. The coach thought the different grip helped Marco throw further than 40 yards. Conduct a hypothesis test using a preset alpha at 0.05. Assume the throw distances for footballs are normal. Okay, we're making a decision there for our central limit theorem. First, determine what type of test this is. Set up the hypothesis test, find the p-value, sketch the graph, and state your conclusion. Be sure to label all six steps. So our hypothesis is that we're going to assume that the mean is just at the 40 yards, what he has always been throwing. Then he changed his grip. So I'm, I'm proposing that his distance is going to be bigger than 40 when he starts using a different grip. So the level of significance they told us to use was alpha at 0 0.05. And to create our p-value, 
um, we're going to have a normal distribution for the mean at 40 and the standard error is going to be the standard deviation of 2 divided by the square root of n, which is 20. And we want to find the probability that the sample mean is a greater than, because we think it's going to be further, is going to, what is the probability that the sample mean is going to be bigger than 45, which is what he got for his sample mean. Um, and that's going to be our p-value. OK, that's what we're going to find right here. So let's go to, let's get that all down. I'll let you take a minute and do that. And then we're going to go to Desmos and put that in and see what that comes out to be. Let's go to Desmos. So 40 and then. And 20 throws, and we're doing a greater than, oopsie, we're doing a greater than, so this is going to be um, greater than 45, because that's what we want to find out, and then we're going to have a delete, delete that, and it is very, very, very small, 2.5447 to the times 10 to the negative 29, that's how unlikely it is. So let's just go ahead and do our magnifying glass and you can see it's very unlikely that it's going to that he's going to increase it like that. So that means that we are going to reject H0. So I'll show you how we'll write this on my paper. Um, so that's going to be, we said 2.545 times 10 to the negative 29. Very, very, very small. Because there is the original 40, and then our 45 would be out here somewhere. And our p value is 2.545 times 10 to the negative 29. That's our p value right here. And we're going to compare that to our alpha, which is 0.05. It's extremely small. So under our decision, we do reject H0. So there is sufficient evidence. So that's how we're going to write it here at the bottom. We're going to say there is sufficient evidence to support the claim. So there is sufficient evidence. to support the claim that changing the grip increases the distance that Marco can throw. There you go. Let's just go through our steps again. So we had our hypothesis. It was a greater than because we think that changing his grip is going to give him a, a larger, a longer distance that he can throw. There's our threshold, our level of significance, our type probability of a type one error is 0.05. <clears throat> our p-value is what is the probability of an extreme event? So something bigger than our actual um, sample mean, which is 45. And when we put that into Desmos, we found out that it's very unlikely, it's very small. So we do reject H0. And so we do say that there's sufficient evidence to support the claim. So it says, it is believed that a stock price <clears throat> for a particular company will grow at a rate of $5 per week with a standard deviation of one. So the mean is it's up $5 a week with a standard deviation of one. 
An investor believes the stock won't grow as quickly. <clears throat> okay, so I think it won't grow as quickly. It must be like a less than. It's going to be less than the five. The change in stock price is recorded for 10 weeks. Okay, so N equals 10, 10 weeks. And we have them as follows. Perform a hypothesis test using a 5% level of significance. State the null and alternative hypothesis. Find the, the p-value. State your conclusion and identify the type one and type two errors. Be sure to label all six steps. Okay, so step one is going to be stating our hypothesis. So our hypothesis says that we think originally that they were increasing by $5 a week. But they're proposing, um, the investor believes that it's not growing by that much. It's actually less than $5 per week. And then they asked us to test at a 5% level of significance. So that's 0 0.05. And so our step three is going to be finding our p-value. So we have a normal distribution with the mean at five and the standard error is one divided by the square root of 10. And so we need to find the sample mean. So for us to do that, we're gonna go to decimals here. Okay, so in decimals, we created a table and put in our data and found the mean of our sample to be 2.6. So our mean growth was only 2.6 over the 10 weeks. So our probability, <clears throat> we want to find the probability, we're gonna go up and put our mean and everything in. So our what we're testing is five and our standard deviation is one over the square root of 10. And we wanna see, what is the probability that it's going to be less than the five, um, less than our sample of 2.6, 2.6. That's what we want to see. And it's very, very, very small. 1.606. So our probability is 1.606 times 10 to the negative 14. Very small probability. So let me go back and show you my paper here. So our sample mean is 2.6. So our p-value is going to be the probability that the sample mean is less than 2.6. Okay, so our $5 is here and it's a left tail. So our p-value is going to go over here and it's very small. I should have shaded a very, very, very small piece here. It's very small, 1.606 times 10 to the negative 14. And the alpha is 0 0.05, which is definitely less than. So we do reject. So our step five is we do reject H0. So step six is there is sufficient evidence to support the claim by the investor that the company there is sufficient evidence to support the claim by the investor that the company won't grow five dollars five dollars per week let me write that five dollars per week there is evidence for that okay <clears throat> there is an extra Um, example I would like to do. So let's go back to our notes here. Okay. 
um, here it is. It says, in 1955, Life Magazine reported that the 25-year-old mother of three worked on average an 80-hour week. So her average hours were 80 hours a week. Recently, many groups have been studying whether or not the women's movement has, in fact, resulted in an increase in the average worked. So an increase, we're going to keep that in mind. Um, and the average week work, work week um, worked for women, combining employment and at-home work. Suppose a study was done to determine if the mean work week has increased 81 women, so N equals 81, 81 women were surveyed with the following results. The sample mean uh, was 83, and the sample standard deviation was 10. Does it appear that the mean work week has increased for women at the 5% level? Okay. So my paper is not going to show this typed out. Here. <clears throat> so step one, so with H0 and H1, H0, we think the mean was 80 hours a week, but they think it has increased. It's more than 80 hours a week. Step two, the alpha they said to use was 0.05. Go back and make sure that we're getting all that correctly. And again, it's going to increase. So step three, <clears throat> we're going to use a normal. Um, with the mean at 80 and standard deviation at 10 divided by the square root of 81. And we our p-value is going to be the probability. Let me show my paper again here. The p-value is going to be the probability that the sample mean is greater than the 83 in the sample mean. So we got to find that. And then our step four is our graph. So we thought originally it was 80 and we're doing a right tailed over here at 83. And then we'll have our step five and our step six eventually. So let's go ahead and find our P value here in Desmos. Point five, oh, no, our standard deviation was 10. And we think it's greater than 83. And our p value is 0 0.0035. So, very small likelihood. <clears throat> it's a little bit over here. If you look at the graph, there's a little bit of a likelihood, but it's definitely less than 5%, <clears throat> which is the alpha that they wanted us to use. So let's go ahead and finish writing this up. So step five is p-value of 0 0.0035 compared to alpha at 0 0.05 is a less than. So we do reject H0. So there is sufficient evidence to support the claim that a woman's work week is longer than 80 hours.
So we do reject H0 because our p-value is, is pretty small. So that is the first part of lesson 9.5. Catch me back for the second part because this was all about quantitative data and means. And the second part is gonna be all about proportions and percentages. And we'll do some examples putting that all together.